Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com where you can go to find out more about the double bass. If you want to learn jazz, classical music, whatever it is that you're looking for, we're there to help you on your journey. And I am joined by one of my favourite jazz bassists. It's the great Yuri Golubev. Yuri, welcome. It's fantastic to have you here today. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. We've, we've been having a kind of a, a, a bit of a discussion around various topics. And one of the things that we couldn't help... Uh, but ask you about is the fact that you flew in to do this inter interview today. So you're a Russian bass player who lives in um, Italy and uh, we're over in Leeds and you've flown in with this wonderful uh, case. And I'd just like to hear about your experience as a traveling bass player, because flying and double yeah. basses don't always mix. So <laughs> well, tell us a little I, bit about it. I do it. it all the time, to be honest, and I find it actually far easier than many people would think. So as far as this case is concerned, it's, as you can see, it's fairly old now, but it's really nice. And it was made by this company in Italy, a near Trieste called Bogaro and Clemente. And uh, the main thing about it, that's empty. It is like 11 and a half kilos. So with the base, we are looking at 22, maximum 23 kilos. So we are within the allowances. That is very important. Now, I do not use any um, inflatable cushions or whatever. I think they are dangerous because the aircraft is pressurized at the level of 10,000 feet. And then when it descends, they inevitably get deflated somehow. I did have such experiences. I really find them unsafe. So what I do, I just put foam padding in all the critical spots and I make sure that it is not really lying on its neck or on its uh, scroll so there is uh, it's sort of on the padding so even in case uh, they drop it and well of course you know you may say touch wood but in all the many 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 years of flying with the base uh, and thousands and thousands of flights uh, everywhere I've had a major accident only once and that was 20 years ago Wow. Yeah, I've had some little things happening, but, well, thank, thank God. But uh, yeah. also, maybe it's because of the way I pack it. And now, what is important, what I would like to actually communi uh, tell to the community is that there are airlines that do not apply the oversized charge. And uh, I highly recommend using them, or there are other airlines that just have a flat fee for musical instruments. So, for example, if you fly with EasyJet, or BA, or German Wings, just you know, or Emirates, there is no oversized charge. And if that's the only item of your luggage, you just pay as a normal checked in item. And if you want to bring to check in your suitcase as well, well, you just purchase a second second item. Uh, well, you have to just really uh, carefully check the conditions. And, you know, um, the main thing is to avoid those that apply crazy uh, surcharges for the oversize and to make sure that the whole thing is not exceeding 23 kilos. Do you ever, do you ever pack your clothes in there as well to kind of... Uh, uh, you know out? what I do? I actually uh, pack, uh, pack in my wash bag in order not to uh, open it at the security. Ah, oh, that's clever. That's fantastic. And uh, uh, any sort of tips about uh, when you arrive at check-in? Anything that you should say or not say or... Um, well, I, I, play totally cool because uh, very often they start calling, they start inquiring and it's really hard to explain to them that you do know the rules, that there is really nothing and you just, you have to, well, okay, if you want to make this phone call, you may make this phone call as well. But uh, there are a couple of things I'd really like to suggest that A, you do have your instrument insured. I use the Alliance and I found them great and they have been extremely helpful always quick and helpful and once you have landed once you've taken it off the belt or like wherever you collect it open it right there and inspect it because if there is a damage even a small damage you must uh, report it straight there or if not at least you have a paper for your insurance company because they will ask for this so inspect it you know once you're out of the airport uh, the airline has no responsibility once you're at the, still at the baggage claim, you can get somewhere. So check it right there. That's absolutely fantastic. I once met a bass player in Heathrow who was uh, just traveling through and he'd done a transatlantic fly and he turned up with his bass in a polystyrene case. And it was just, mm -hmm. I, I just happened to see him. So I went and introduced myself to him. This was many years ago now. And he was saying that he's been flying with those polystyrene cases. You know, the ones that you kind of see, you get with cheaper instrument, modern instruments. Ah, you mean the... 
Chinese. Yeah, you often get like those. It kind of is interesting. Very actually. light. Yes, I think they're like six, seven, eight kilos. Yes. Uh, em empty, which is absolutely great. They're semi rigid, but probably that's sufficient because I haven't heard of people having like mm. accidents, you know, in the in these cases. Mm. Mm. So I mean, it could be it could be an option to try. But uh, I've seen a few. What I found that they're very small. But even when it says 4-4, four, four, you're, you're lucky if you fit your 3-4 instruments in there. So you have to actually try and see if your bass does fit in. The, the other couple of tips that I've heard on the grape da grapevine is my friend uh, Marcus Machado was visiting and he would leave the tags on always. He said just always leave them on. So then when you arrive, at the ch it's obvious that you've travelled with it before. And I that do you're, exactly you know, the same. So exactly leaving, the same, never yes. remove any of the tags. And this, is, this case is testament to it. Um, yes, I share this 100%. That's exactly the purpose why I never remove anything so they know that it's been there many times and it's fine. I've completely also, agree. I, I've also heard somebody, and Marcus didn't suggest this, but I've also heard people suggest that you don't call it a double bass, that you call it a cello. But I don't know if that might be a little bit ridiculous, uh, really. But I don't know. You know what? We may laugh about it, but sometimes mm. uh, the people at the check-in, they, they would really have no idea. They don't care. They just see a big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, sometimes it, it did happen to me. They would write like cello. Mm. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, sure. Fine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. As long as you can get it on. But it's just so fantastic because when we were chatting about you coming over um, and you were saying, oh yeah, I'm going to come over and bring this uh, beautiful double bass that you've brought with you. I was thinking, wow, this is, this is interesting. And last question that's just come to me, transatlantic flights, have you found that be much different between that and more local flying? No? Not really, except that, well, I haven't been flying with the base of the USA lately for, like, yeah. I think last time was quite a, quite a few years ago. So I remember the TSA, they would just open it anyway. And, uh, you know, it's a bit dangerous when they try to do something, you know, on their own. They would, wouldn't let you touch it. They wouldn't let you give any instructions and sometimes you actually do need to help but they wouldn't let you maybe the situation has changed i don't know mm. but as far as the fares and like airlines once again you have to you have to just check the rules like you know if you fly emirates like to australia for example uh, the limit is 32 kilos oh it used to be mm. last time i flew 32 kilos and uh no um, overweight charge oh sorry no, no oversized charge so it well, works. That's fantastic. It's, there's a lot of negative news uh, when you talk to double bass players about flying with instruments, and it's great to see that you're having this positive. I think experience. it's a, yeah, it's a question of how you pack it. Yeah. What sort of case you have, and actually, the simpler the case is, the better. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great note to end uh, to end on. So, Yuri, thank you so much for joining us today. Obviously, people they want to learn more about you. Where can we send them? Where, where can they go to find out more about you? Well. Um, they're very welcome to visit my website, which is uh, yurigolodev.com. Um, there is lots of information there. Then there is a Wikipedia page. Um, I'm also on Facebook sometimes. Um, and uh, I also do some videos on YouTube, uh, which are, well, aside from the live videos, like just gigs, that somebody published. Uh, so I uh, produce these little tutorials to help the aspiring bass players with the basics. Oh, and I feel like yeah. I feel myself like out on a mission. So I think uh, to date I've done four tutorials, but I need to keep it up like to you know try and do at least once uh, one new tutorial a month. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, listen, I would encourage everybody to go and check those out. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us in Leeds today. It's been an absolute pleasure to uh, talk bass with you and uh, to get to meet, much, you and meet you in person. I've seen you Likewise. play several times, yeah. but it's been good to hang. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching at home. Keep practicing hard and we'll see you next time.